So you click on this share folder, click on the share folder, and you will see actually I have already uh, included uh, the PowerPoint uh, in the share folder. Okay, you can just open it, okay? okay. Okay, I think actually perhaps in the uh, past few weeks you already you, you, you had uh, some uh, uh, a short uh, quick taste of what I call this is right. I remember I, I performed some searches for you. Okay, today you're going to uh, learn how to use uh, the Corpus tools more systematically. Okay, uh, particularly I think actually this corpus based approach can be very useful for vocabulary teaching learning, but not only for vocabulary. Okay. Actually, it can be a perfect tool for learning grammar. Okay. I believe maybe Jack, Jackie has already mentioned, right? Uh, you know, introduce this tool in her uh, in her lessons. Okay. So actually, so tell me what tell me what you know about a corpus. So what is a corpus? A large database. Okay, that's fine. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, what a concordance line is. What is a concordance line? Okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter, okay. So actually, okay, I'll just give you some basic, I'll give you a definition of some basic keywords, okay? All right. All right. Okay, so uh, a, sh a quick outline of today's uh, workshop. First, uh, very quickly, I will give you uh, provide you with the aims and objectives of this workshop. And afterwards, uh, well, I will introduce you. You know, uh, I will give you an introduction of the key concepts involved in doing, uh, you know, uh, in doing corpus-based uh, searches. Okay, and then afterwards, you're going to uh, do some perform some hands-on corpus searches. Okay. And in the, uh, in the end of this, towards the end of this workshop, I'm going to show you how you can design, you know, learning teaching activities, you know, um, using uh, corpus data, okay? Okay, so by the end of the workshop, you will be familiar with basic concepts such as corpus and concordances, okay? So corpus concordances, they always, you know, uh, appear together, appear together, okay? And you know how to do some basic searches from selected free online corpora. Free, that means, what does free mean here? You don't need to pay for it. It's free, it's free for you to use, okay? And I uh, also hope that you can develop some initial ability to use the corpora in the ESL or EFL classroom. Okay? So that means how to design some corpus-based teaching learning activities. Okay? So it seems we are quite ambitious, right? We're going to achieve all this within two hours. Let's see if we can achieve this or not. Well, uh, Randy Rappen uh, is a, a scholar. And she's uh, also a, a corpus linguist. Okay. She wrote several books about uh, corpus-based, uh, you know, research or you know, corpus-based teaching methods, uh, which have been published by the, uh, I think, uh, Cambridge University Press. Okay. Uh, so what can corpus? What can corpus do for us? It can provide insights into language use when our intuitions fail. You know, all of you have learned language for many years, right? So you already, you know, you have some, you know, you kind of have some intuition about how language behaviors, okay? But sometimes, you know, you know that we are human beings, right? We cannot me remember everything, right? Sometimes maybe we forget, well, for example, like, how should this verb be collocated with another word or another preposition, right? You simply just forgot, right? You will forget, your student will forget, so what will you do? You can go, uh, go to a uh, search in a course, they will find the collocations immediately, okay? Okay, uh, now I'll, I'm going to test your intuition. What is the most frequently used English word according to you, according to your intuition? 
which one which one do you think is the most frequently used which word thank you you think so that's intuition right okay do we have a, a, a other answers okay good the the article the is the most frequent if you search the in the corpus you will see it's the most frequent word okay now which one is, do you think is the most frequently used verb English verb verb Yes, good. <laughs> You're correct. B. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's the next? What's the second? Uh, you know, most frequently used engineer. You don't know, right? Apart from B. Okay. Now I'm going to show you down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, for example, uh, one. So that means. In this uh, corpus, okay, later I will give you uh, uh, more information about this uh, uh, corpus website, okay? Uh, so I just choose verbs, because I'm only interested in knowing verbs. And in this corpus, it lists uh, words from the most frequently word, number one, to the 60,000 frequency word, okay? So you can click search. You see that? So rank B. B as a verb. You know, uh, you only see verbs here, so that's the uh, it ranks number two among all the words. So this is the most frequently used English verbs, right? The second one should be have, and then do, see, go, can, get. Okay. So I think uh, just a simple example. You know, uh, we all have our intuitions, but not always our intuitions could be correct. So why don't you go to an office and check it? Later you have opportunity to work with this website, okay? Okay, um, and also, uh, actually, a corpus can be a useful source for developing language teaching and learning materials. That's the purpose, why we need to have this course workshop today, okay? At first, you know, you have to know how to search, to do some basic searches in a corpus website, okay? Later, you will have some idea, okay? How to design some you know, language teaching learning materials. You know, why do you need to learn these tools? You know, I, I think uh, you are you are your student, right? But most of you may be uh, pre-service teachers very soon, right? So first, you know, try to learn to use these powerful tools. Try to help yourself learn English, improve in English, and later you can actually introduce these tools to your students to help them become uh, independent language learners. If you show them how to, you know, uh, search in a corpus, you know, so later they don't, they don't always need to ask you questions. Actually, they can search in the corpus and find the answers, you know, to their own uh, language purpose questions, okay? And also, I think, uh, you know, if you ask students to do something, it would be better to simply let them listen to you for a long time, right? Okay? Why don't you ask them to do something? Search, you know? So they like to search on, on the internet, right? Well, now you tell, you tell them, okay, now we, we, we're not going to search the internet, but we're going to search in the corpus, right? <laughs> they get lots of language data, okay? Right. Well, uh, so what a corpus is, so a corpus is a singular form, and the plural form is corpora. Okay, so several corpora, two corpora, one corpus, okay. It's a large, principal collection of naturally occurring texts. Be, be it written or spoken, stored electronically, okay? So it's a large, you know. Uh, the largest one I think maybe is Coca. It, is, uh, it contains more than five million words. No, 500 million words, sorry. Well, principle of the collection, what does it mean? For example, when you do a search, keyword search in Google, you can find lots of text, right? But are these texts arranged for you? You can find all types of texts, right? Some ad advertisements, right? You know, uh, maybe some uh, kind of a text, some articles, right? So you find all types of uh, texts. But in a corpus, usually it only contains one specifically a collected type of text, for example, news. You can collect a corpus of news texts, okay? You can also collect a, top, a corpus of fiction, okay? novels or maybe academic writing 
So in a conference, you see it's more systematic. You, know, you, you can't say, if I collect a, 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 date, a, a, you know, a large database, you cannot claim that actually it's a conference. Okay? You have to follow some principle. For example, I, I combined uh, a two million uh, parallel uh, EAP Cobra. Cobra, okay. Cobra, okay. One million, one million words contain student writing uh, on language studies. The other million, uh, also uh, another uh, million words, you know, contained experts writing. So I got all these texts from research articles. So I, I claim it to be EAP. Do you understand EAP? What does EAP mean? Yeah, English for academic purposes. So in this case, I can only uh, collect, for example, do you think it would be fine if I collect letters? No. So what should I collect? Academic writing. So academic assignments. So I only collect student academic assignments. So I can claim it to be an EAP call. Okay. Now, naturally occurring text, what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, we use a language for some uh, real communicative purpose, for example. Actually, you can collect a, a, a corpus of letters, business letters, okay? Because we need to write business letters, deal with business, right? So this actually uh, is for a genuine uh, communicate, uh, communicating uh, uh, purpose, right? Okay. You can collect a copies of EAP because we, you know, the researchers, you know, our students, they need to read research articles, right? Okay. Now, mostly, you know, a uh, lot, I think, uh, the copies could be written. You can you collect written texts. But sometimes you can al also collect spoken language. Okay, for example, like next uh, semester, uh, Dr. Rebecca Chen will show you uh, her uh, a spoken uh, Okay, uh, so I'll only show you free, free Cobra, online Cobra, okay? So that means you can always access uh, this Cobra, okay? Uh, like BNC, British National Corpus. So you can imagine, so in this type of Corpus, it will contain, it will contain only which type of language? British English, that's right. So there are about 100 million words. Uh, it is, uh, you can find, uh, it contains five types or five genres of language. Fiction, magazine, newspaper, academic writing and spoken, okay? And the COCA. COCA actually is the equivalent of BMC, but it's, it only collects American English, okay? Uh, so it's, uh, the structure is very similar to BNC. It also uh, contains five genres of language. So that is fiction, magazine, newspaper, academic writing, spoken. Okay, but it's much larger. It's five times larger. So 500 million words. Okay, and wooden phrase. Wooden phrase actually uh, is based on Coca. So it only contains American English. Uh, okay, and also I'm going to show you uh, actually the real. Uh, the, the the acronym should be Lex Tutor. Okay, Lex Tutor. Lex Tutor actually is a very useful uh, learning website. Personally, I've been using it for more than ten years. I shared it to I shared the, I shared this website with many of my students. Okay, very useful. Uh, also, actually, in our department, Department of Linguistics and Modern Language Studies, we have actually um, many of our colleagues actually have interest in Corpus linguistics. Okay, so you can check this website. But basically, this uh, okay. For example, like I mentioned, my EAP, my two million uh, EAP uh, corpus actually is also hosted in this in the EDUHK uh, corpus website. Okay, but basically, these are for research purposes. Okay, <laughs> for example, like to research like uh, students' language. Okay, perhaps are not very useful for teaching uh, and learning at primary or secondary school. Okay? But the neighbors is all quite useful, okay? It's developed uh, by the uh, Hong Kong University of Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong University of Science Education, okay. HKUST, okay? Today I will just focus on two. Oh, sorry. Oh, so this actually is our web, uh, our uh, you know department's website. So my uh, EAP uh, corpus is here, 
okay? If you have time, you can take a look, okay? Uh, I'll just focus on two free Cobra today, Word in the Phrase and Lex Tutor. Okay? For Lex Tutor, it's complete free. You don't, need, you don't need, uh, even need to register. For a Word in the Phrase, you can maybe perform searches up to 20. 20 searches, then you have to register. Okay? But it's very useful. Okay? You can register Word in the Phrase. You can also use Coca. It's the same, it's connected. You can use the same password and email address to also uh, uh, you know, register COCA. And if you register for COCA, you can also use BNC for free. Okay, <laughs> okay. So it's worthwhile. It makes the effort to register for this website, okay? Now first I'm gonna show you how to search words in Lex Studio. Uh, okay, so this is how this website looks like. So do you know where should I input the keyword? Where? Yeah, you see the keyword, right? So very easy. You just need to uh, you know, type a keyword in it, okay? All right. Okay, so uh, after you type a keyword, what do you what should you do next? Okay, I will show you what you should do next, okay? You put a keyword here, right? You put a keyword here. Did you see this? You have certain functions, okay? So actually you can choose five types of, uh, you can specify how you're going to search the words. Equals, what does it mean? For example, if you search comfort, you only get comfort, not comfortable, okay? If you choose, uh, if you choose family, you can, uh, in a search result, you get comfort, comfortable, comforting, comfortable, uncomforted, uncomfortable, comfort, okay? If you search uh, with the function stars, okay, and you get you get comfort, and those with uh, different endings suffixes, like comfortable, comforting, uncomfortable, uncomfortable, okay. But you, you you won't get any words, you know, with some prefix, okay. Yeah, and also you can choose uh, another function is ends. You, in this case, usually you will enter a suffix. So you can, uh, in a search results, you can get all the words ended with this suffix. So this is uh, four types of you know, search functions, okay? And also you have going to choose a uh, corpus, specify corpus. Look, there's so many corpus here. <laughs> more than 40, more than 40. So which corpus are you going to choose, you know? Uh, actually, we, we spent a long time testing this uh, corpora, okay? So for language teachers, uh, you know, in primary school, secondary school, we, make, we will make some recommendations for you, okay? For upper primary students, if you're going to make your students search, you know, uh, uh, you know in a corpus, so we advise, we, we suggest, uh, suggest you to choose an easy course. So Disney's, Disney's groups. It contains only about 100,000 words. So, you know, usually uh, this, uh, you know, it contains subtitles from uh, Disney movies, right? So easy to understand, cartoon movies, okay? For upper primary or junior secondary, you can maybe choose the 2K rigid corpus. 2K, what does it mean? It, that means actually in this corpus, it only contains words up to, what? K means thousand. 2,000 frequency levels words. Okay, so actually it's a frequent words, okay? For teachers or senior secondary, you can use this. BNC Coca is, is really huge, 14 million. Okay, so it's a balance of British and American English. Or you can use Brown and BNC written. This is actually the one, I my favorite one, because there are only two million words. That means when you enter a keyword, you won't get lots of results. Maybe you can get something like maybe 100 or 200 concordance lines, right? If you search, for example, like BNC Coca, 14 million, maybe you get thousands of lines, thousands of uh, sentences. Difficult for you to observe, to, you know, okay? So personally, I prefer this one. Brown, BNC written. Brown is American English, BNC is British English. So actually you can search both Brown both American and British and English, okay, right? If you're only interested in uh, speech, spoken corpus, you can use BNC speech, 10 million, huge, okay? 
Okay. Now afterwards, what should you do? You have to sort the word to the left or right of keyword. You can also specify the number. So I want to ask you, so should you sort the sentences to the left or right of the keyword? It really depends, right? Depends whether you're interested in knowing the words that after the word, keyword, or before the keyword, right? Okay. Now, if you sort the word, one word to the left, you can see that. Uh, so arrival, arrival is a keyword here, right? So you can see that the first word to its left, you know, uh, all, the word, all the first words to its left have been highlighted for you, bolded for you. If you sort to the right, you see, uh, the first word to its right uh, will be highlighted for you. It's up to you, okay? All right. Now I'm going to uh, show you how show we, for example, like, um, suppose we're going to find out how should we use the verb insist. Insist, okay? So I choose, okay, that's fine. I just, I, I just leave equals. I will explain to you why I choose equals now, okay? And then next, uh, do you remember which one is my favorite? Which one uh, is my favorite corpus? <laughs> which one? Did you see it? Brown and BNC written, right? Okay, here, <laughs> okay? All right. Now, okay, I have to sort the word. Now it's a test, quick test. Uh, now first, so which number should I, one or two or three? One, okay. Now, left or right? Two choices. Right? Right, that's right. Because we are, we're interested in actually which words will be after insist rather than before, right? So you have to sort it to the right, sorry. And then, uh, what about this? Well, you can change it. If you change it to 120, that means the sentence is large, la uh, longer, longer, okay. Then you see, get concordance. So you see how many sentences, or how, or how many concordance li uh, lines have you got? 40, 40 hits, right? So that means you got uh, 40 uh, concordance lines which contain, uh, which contain uh, the word insist. The thing is, you can see that by looking at this, uh, concordance lines. Can you summarize the use of uh, the use pattern for the word for the verb insist? So how should the insist be used? When insist is used as a verb, we can say insist on something, right? Or insist can be followed by that clause. Or you can say insist upon something, or doing something, is that right? So this is an advantage of using our corpus, right? So you can show your students very quickly the language use pattern of a particular, uh, you know, uh, like noun or verb, right? It's very useful. Now, earlier I told you why I don't choose others. You know, I don't, for example, why don't I choose uh, stars? Remember, like here, I only got 40 uh, hits, and I can see the language patterns very clearly, right? Actually, you can choose maybe uh, uh, choose, for example, like stars with. You will get a lot more concordance lines. Okay, you can get insisted, insistence, uh, you know, so you, how many concordance lines do you get? Actually, 169, but it's okay. It's still manageable, right? <laughs> it's not too bad, okay? But for demonstration purpose, I prefer to start with, okay? Easy and quick, okay? And sometimes you will get, if you search a very common word, actually, it will take you maybe a few seconds, a few, more well, two minutes, you can get more than a thousand lines. Okay, so it's very difficult to summarize language patterns, okay? Right. Okay, you see that? After you perform this very basic search, you can show your students easily, uh, very, uh, very quickly, you know, uh, what the use pattern for the verbing assist, okay? And also it has a nice function, uh, you can use a gap function to make some exercise, okay? I'm going to show you, okay? So let's go back to the 
the search, okay? Uh, you can go back, uh, back, English input. Remember here, GAT, see that? GAT, GAT, you choose yes, okay? And then you can do the same. Maybe you, you choose the same, okay? This one should be Bian's Brong, Brong Bian Z, okay? Then you get concordance. You can see that. So all the keyword has been gapped for you. So you ac actually can copy and paste sentences to make some uh, gap exercise, okay? This function is quite useful, okay? If you, well, if you are, yeah, okay? So actually you can copy and paste. Uh, you can uh, you can click 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 and they can you can copy and paste okay extract it to check items okay yeah. okay now for you to work on to start your corpus <laughs> hands-on searches okay so are the following sentences correct if not use the information you gained from the concordances of lack and the boring and rewrite the sentences okay. Now suppose, maybe you know the answer, it doesn't matter, but how do you show to your students, you know, we, can't, we couldn't see his lack of money, okay? But actually most Chinese students, many Chinese students will tend to use lack this way, his lack of something. You know, so maybe you tell them, you cannot use lack this way, but next time, he will forget, he will use lack th this way again. So maybe you can make them do some corporate searches, right? Okay, and then I make them observe the language use, okay? So now you have to do some, you know, searches, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, and try to find out the answer and think about how you can explain the answer to your students, okay? Yes. If you have any question, you can raise your hand, okay? And me and, uh, you know, uh, me and my R.A. Eugene will come to help you, okay? So you can go back to the, do you know how to access that website. If you open the website already, uh, okay. So you try to search. Okay. If you're not sure how to start, try to discuss with the classmates. Sometimes maybe you try try with different search functions, stars or equals, stars with or equals, right? Okay, sometimes if you choose a different search function, it may, you know, allow you to see a clear pattern of the language use, okay?
So when lots of people are performing uh, uh, searches on the same website, it may take uh, a little bit uh, <laughs> more time, you know, okay? <laughs> All right, so be patient, okay? But it's free, so you can't complain, right? <laughs>
Actually, I want to invite someone. Okay, and task 1A. So why it is wrong? Does anyone want to share your answer? Answer with us? Why it is wrong? Okay, now tell me the accurate use. So what should be the accurate use? The word lack. Money, right? Yes. Okay. All right. He lacks money. Uh, 